Hello, hello. All right, yes, 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 yes. We are back. Mortimer Ian Tales. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'm just going to try it, whatever. Uh, Bob Mortimer on Would I Lie to You, part three, and I guess the final part. So, of this one, because there's a part two of this, too. So, I'm going to do that, too. Whatever. I'll understand. It's just pieces. Anyway, let's just do it, because I'm excited. <laughs> and I also saw some lies already, and... <laughs> I am understanding. This this guy's amazing. I am understanding why he's such a legend. Um, just amazing. I'm loving it. Let's uh, do this. This is Michael. I once punched him in the face because I thought he was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, how do you know Michael? This is Michael, and after cutting his hair, I got a job on a campsite as a hairdresser. <laughs> and finally, Lee, what's your relationship with Michael? This is Michael. Together, we helped free a donkey that had trapped itself <laughs> in the cubicle of a seaside toilet. <laughs> Bob, that was very you cut specific. Michael's hair, and this was on a, on a campsite. Yeah. How did you come to... Because you're not a hairdresser, are you? I'm <laughs> a hairdresser, David. <laughs> had you, you previously worked as a hairdresser, had you? I'm from a family. I'm the youngest of four boys. And in my family, the tradition is this, that the eldest is a priest. Then a lawyer, <laughs> then a teacher, and then a hairdresser. So, <laughs> so it fell to me to take up the scissors. I was given my first set of scissors when I was 13. I actually had a pair of scissors when I was younger than that. <laughs> <laughs> were you the fourth child? Yeah, no, no, it wasn't. It was more for, you know, cutting out bits of coloured paper. Oh, no, these were, no, these were Japanese steels. These were Yasakis. Right, OK. So, <laughs> so you, you were given these hairdressing scissors at the age of 14. Yes. Had you undergone any further training or just were encouraged to experiment? Well, here's the rub, because Michael, or Mickey, as you know, Mickey the Drink, he's... <laughs> <laughs> Mickey what, the... Why is he called <laughs> Mickey the Drink? Anyway, so, he was one of the first people that I ever gave a haircut to as a young boy, as one of my friends. And then, fast forward to 1982, I go to the World Cup in Spain. There was Michael, um, Billy the Pigeon... <laughs> Gentle Ken... Billy the Pigeon? Gentle Ken, yeah. Why is he called Billy the Pigeon? Oh, he's finding his way home. No, he's a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> He had, like, a uh, fat chest. We all went to Spain. We were on the campsite for the England fans. I, as always, gave um, Mickey his haircut. And the one-man army from Nottingham, the Nottingham Forest fan, yeah. caused all the trouble out there. He demanded that he had a haircut. What trouble did he cause out there? Well, he, for example, he, he rushed to the cafe that we're in and threw a coin like that. <laughs> <laughs> Could have damaged anyone. <laughs> Luckily, it went Damn. straight in the slot machine and won the jackpot. It was really rather simple story. So I cut Mickey's head. I'd done since he was thirteen. So you, my... You'd cut his hair regularly. You first did when he was thirteen. When he was and 13, you were his, the first people you were his regular hairdresser. No, that would be a lie. But I would always cut Mickey's hair. Yeah. I was seen doing this, and before you knew it, over the course of the next ten days, <laughs> I probably did. 50 to 60 haircuts. <laughs> and were you paid for these haircuts? I believe I that. probably was, but in kind. Right. Oh, because no. <laughs> I believe that. <laughs> the only thing any of these English fans could say was huevo solo. That and that got you an egg sandwich. <laughs> and I seem to remember that people, because I was cutting hair, it was always in the morning, that someone would bring me, oh, mate, you're busy cutting hair, you have a huevo solo. So, so you're paying egg sandwiches? I think maybe I was. And you, and you, I'm, I'm, I'm and you, and you did 50 haircuts over, what, how many days? I think it was probably eight days. So you, you're getting, having 50 egg sandwiches over eight <laughs> <days>. <laughs> I mean, I'm interested in the haircuts themselves. Yeah. Was there a signature style? It was the early 80s. Were there mullets going on? I mean, what was the look? It was a, fe it was a feathered look. I was expert. It was called, where I'm from, it's called the Foffa. You'll probably think of it, probably think of it like Ro like Rod Stewart. Oh, it's a lovely look. Uh, Layered at the bottom. Yes. Yeah. Do you still cut hair now? Oh, not so much now, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you, I can't, I, can't, I can't do the new 
new cuts. What? Do you hear that? I can't do I the can't new do cuts. the new cuts. <laughs> We need an answer. David's team. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm gonna say uh, true. First of all, I uh, I mentioned this in the James Ac Acaster. You guys taught me. I was saying it wrong. Acaster video with the haircut. I mentioned I cut hair, not professionally, but the way I started cutting hair is I was eight years old, and my dad is one of those people <clears throat> that is bald but not completely bald he has like the crown of hair around <laughs> ever since I was little that's that's what I always thought like I've never seen him have hair on the top of his head it was always just around the sides you know he always went and a little off the top no it was the sides and when I was eight he's like you know what you can cut my hair I was like sure <laughs> I can do that and I, I don't know what for what reason he trusted an eight-year-old to cut his hair. He gave me a pair of scissors and a comb, and he said, you know how to do it? And I said, uh, no. <laughs> no, how do I do that? And he just showed me. You grab the hair, you put it between your fingers, you put it in the comb, and you cut. I was like, all right, I got this. Let's do this. And I cut his hair. And he let me. He trusted me. He, didn't, he wasn't even, like, looking in a mirror or anything. He wasn't, like, concerned at all. <laughs> I guess because it wasn't that, I, I couldn't make his haircut look worse. <laughs> there wasn't that much to cut and that much to change. <laughs> so I don't know. He just let me. And when it, when I was done, it wasn't that bad. Like it didn't look like an eight year old cut it and he was fine with it. So I ended up cutting his hair for a long, <laughs> a long time for years. Uh, and then every once in a while, like my brothers would need touch ups and stuff. So I would, I would help them out. And uh, it just, it, turned into a thing and I, I I cut many friends hair and cut my boyfriend's hair well when he had it now he shaves his head uh, but I've, I've done many many haircuts and never been paid cash oh oh my dad paid me cash a couple times when I was really broke and I really needed it just the kindness of his heart <laughs> which was he was gonna give me money anyway just to help me out and it, the excuse was the haircut but I've cut hair and um, I've been paid lunch and I've been paid, you know, just people saying thank you. And that's about it. So I believe the egg sandwiches. I believe in not being paid. I believe in the hair. I believe I believe it all. I believe it all. He even knew the name of the, the shears, the Japanese shears for cutting hair. They're special scissors. It's not normal scissors. It's not colorful paper colored, whatever, scissors. Anyway, let's cool. see. Diane's ghostly guy, Bob's campsite client, or Lee's donkey do-gooder. Well, I kind of want to hear the donkey story See, I though. First, when I heard Diane's story, I thought that was a lie, <coughs> and then I heard Bob's story, <laughs> and, uh, Lee's story, and then suddenly Diane's story seems a little yeah. bit more real. Um, I think it's Bob. <laughs> I think giving mm. your man a haircut is the truth. Fifty oh, haircuts yeah. in a week, paid in egg sandwiches. That, that the fifty haircuts is a little much in a week. I don't know that you can do that hairstyle with one pair of scissors. I'm from a family of hairdressers, and I just don't think you can do oh my Rod Stewart. Oh, family of hairdressers. Of Did you have more than one pair of scissors with no, you? No, my response to that, Nadia, is a family of not very good hairdressers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> two, two sets of scissors? He looks round about Bob's age. <laughs> Edward Scissorhands type thing. Yeah. <laughs> I just say one final chance. He looks to me like a man who hangs around gentlemen's toilets. <laughs> oh, poor guy! <laughs> I'm going with Diane. Yeah. I'm going with Diane. <coughs> I'm going with Bob. I didn't hear the other stories. That it is Diane. Michael, would you please confirm your true identity? Uh, my name is Michael, and Bob gave me a haircut on a cancer. Yes! <laughs> Excellent. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> they can actually see photographic evidence of Bob cutting Michael's hair. There yeah, they are. there you go. Oh, my gosh. They look the really same. In that picture, picture, they look like the same person. <laughs> I have a didgeridoo suspended from a tree in my back garden so that what? when the wind blows in a particular direction, it pops soothing sounds of the outback into my bedroom window. <laughs> what? Uh, David's team, what do you think? Pops soothing sounds of the outback. Yes. What a, what a poetic way of putting it. Thank you. Do um, you genuinely believe that that particular instrument makes a pop? How would you describe it, Greg? 
This every night in my house, please. <laughs> <laughs> Is it bomb it in a tree? Yeah. And you oh, made a conscious decision to put it in the tree. Yeah. I didn't I know, know it was hanging, hanging in that tree. tree. What it is, is it's trapped in a, a V. I was like, is there a name for that area of a tree? Is it called the Clooney it's, or something? It's, it's, it's called... It's Clooney. It's Clooney. <laughs> 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 I don't believe George Clooney's holding a didgeridoo of a tree in his garden. Why don't you believe this? <laughs> this part of your finger there is called the Clooney. Is it? So I'm assuming... I never knew That's that. That's why I said Clooney. I know right. Clooney. Where, where, where it, and it's wedged there. It's wedged in the tree's V. Yes. <laughs> it's wedged, wedged horizontally in the tree's V, facing southeast, which is the prevailing wind where I live. Where do you live? Not Britain. Britain. No, well, the prevailing wind in Britain is southwesterly. It doesn't happen every night. Should <laughs> <laughs> you tell us what this sound does for you then? You're lying in bed at night and. You, you had a lovely day, you're just settling down, and you hear... And then what, what, sort of, what, what happens to you? I'm soothed. <laughs> and the mind is soothed. Do you know you get things that do, will do the same thing to, say, your throat? Yes. That does it to the mind. What if your brain's fine? You don't want to hear that every time it's windy. You're always soothing your brain, that's what sleep is. Don't hence that, hence the success of the pillow. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say, though, Bob, I've been led to believe by uh, out-of-work hippies mm. over the years that the didgeridoo is an incredibly difficult instrument to play, yeah. and yet it would appear that all one has to do is to pass air through it. <laughs> no, well, you have to position it correctly, just as you would have to over your mouth. I've done that by utilising the Clooney. <laughs> of the tree. You're but using that, the Clooney that's that's tree as human lips. <laughs> Even to get any kind of noise that I did redo, the Clooney, which How it doesn't did exist do? on Bob's tree, <laughs> um, <laughs> would, would have to be flashlight because uh, uh, Aboriginal doesn't just go. Because <gasps> <laughs> it's not just wind; they use their lips. Very good point. Very good point. <laughs> just coming up this time of year, I admit it's a lot better. In fact, it, it, I have a wisteria that grows through the... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that is, either. <laughs> is it, He's course. so serious. Is it and one when of the wisteria it? comes into leaf, yeah. not only yeah. does it pipe the wind <laughs> towards yeah. the didgeridoo, but it acts as the lips. <laughs> it's long been said that <laughs> if the wind blows in the right direction through wisteria, <laughs> it can play any instrument <laughs> in the world. <laughs> It's yeah, time to decide, David. <laughs> OK, we need to make it. Yes. What are you going to say? Um, mm. I think it's a lie. Of course it's a lie. We <laughs> I want it to be true, but I'm going with lie. But I want it to be true, just because... <laughs> just to get these guys wrong, man. Just to confuse everybody. I don't know the words they're saying. I don't know what a hysteria is. I don't know what a didgeridoo is. I, I, I just have to play off by what they're saying, that it's an instrument that you need to blow on it. Like, it's just not wind. I don't know. I'm saying lie. I'm going we think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. Well, Please uh, Bob, were you telling the truth or were you telling a lie? I was lying. <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be true. <laughs> I recently had to charm a spider out of my shoe by tooting a flute at it. <laughs> David's team. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What? I, I need to hear that again, because I don't know what I just heard. He did what? I'm sorry. I recently had to charm a spider out of my shoe by tooting a flute at it. <laughs> Why is the word David's charm? <laughs> Not spirit. <laughs> Charmed it. Um, so, where, where <laughs> were you? I was at home. So is this spider a normal British domestic spider? Yes. H how big was it, Bob? It was... It's black, but it's not... <laughs> and what colour was it? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> well, I was telling, it's not the ones that have got a little body and big, long legs. Mm. The you know, daddy sorry, long legs. It wasn't the type with a, with a small body and long legs. Yeah, no. What type was it? it was well, you can work the rest out yourself, surely. Yeah. <laughs> Big body, small legs. Yeah. Was this a gerbil? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a if bird. If it doing a gerbil, I'd have used a loot. <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Thank God he went like this, because I have no idea what a loot is. <laughs> 
daddy long legs. I don't know what you guys call the in in Britain the little body and the long legs, but to me it's a daddy long legs. And you know what? They don't those don't exist in Argentina. We get a lot of the spiders that look exactly like the spiders that uh, bit Spider Man, like the the big fat butt and the legs that aren't long but like fat and short. A lot of those here. Ugh, I hate spiders. But anyway, thank God there was visuals. <laughs> It's actually just a very everyday situation. My wife doesn't like um, spiders, very scared of them, and it's kind of my job to get rid of spiders. I don't like them either. I'm not going to use my hands or whatever. So he bought a flu. Can you mime the, the blow moment? Don't fall for this. Sorry? <laughs> he gets me with this every week. Don't fall for it. <laughs> I've got just the thing for you if you haven't got a flute. Close your eyes. Oh, no! <laughs> fall for it. Do not fall for it. Blow it into the shoe. Yes, I blew down the flute to bring it out into the heel area. Mm -hmm. These were a kind of snakeskin elastic slipper. Yeah. I brought up just under the windowsill, above where the cat litter is. Yeah. I put them there because I wanted to get that height, and it didn't so come out. So you I moved it. The, yes, you I, moved the slipper with the spider in it. I moved it facing the cupboard where I keep the plates. <laughs> yeah. got, I can't. I mean, it's got little holes in it. Uh. <laughs> And the spider emerged. <sighs> so the spider emerged, but didn't leave the shoe or slipper. No, didn't leave Did the, the slipper. slipper. Didn't no, leave the slipper. Just... I didn't look around. <laughs> and went back in. Well, so I you were know. no better off, were you? No, well, then... well, I didn't feel like I was better off, but I, I, at least I'd um, found out that we owned a flute as a family. <laughs> Why did he have the I wouldn't go anywhere near that slipper. Just for I'd that? Just leave it. I would just I'm let not that scared, I'm, 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 Are you not? Scared I'm, one to ten. I'm ginger about them. OK. Yeah. Yeah. Ginger. Is that right? A ginger? Is that a word? It is, yeah, that's yeah. That's a word. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's the correct word in that yeah, situation. It's not like you, you pick something up gingerly. gingerly. It's not... It doesn't just mean the flavour ginger. <laughs> <laughs> a ginger nut is not just a biscuit. <laughs> it could be a tentative testicle. <laughs> Do you now know who the flute belongs to? Yes, of course, it was my son's flute. Your son, is he a yeah. flautist? No. We hoped he would be, but he <laughs> could never find the flute. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you thinking? Well, what I'm confused by is that if you fear spiders... I do a bit. ..and you believe that there's a spider in this shoe, I think you would be afraid to move the shoe. Not at all. I also think I you would have worried about, as you go to take the breath to blow it, you accidentally breathe in. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I disagree. I'm, I don't have to breathe in to breathe out. <laughs> <laughs> That's not making sense. Michael, what, which way are you leaning? It's uh... Something is madding up there. Um... Hmm. <clears throat> I'm confused as why a flute. Like, was he trying to get it out with the sound the flute made, or was it air? Because if it was air, it could have used anything. It could have just blown on the shoe, right? Like, or if he wasn't afraid to pick it up, you can pick it up and, you know, shake it or turn it upside down. Like, there's a lot of things you could have done. But since it's Bob, also, the word charm was in there. He was trying to charm the spider, not get it out. Anyway, since it's Bob, I'm going to say it's true. Just because I disagree with the lady that said, if you're scared of it, you wouldn't touch it. That's not true. I'm scared of spiders. And I touch, I gingerly touch <laughs> the object they're on and throw it out in the patio. I don't, I don't like killing spiders. They do. I used to kill them. And then my boyfriend says, no, don't kill them. So I don't kill them anymore. But I take them outside. And, um... The breathe in, breathe out. Like, how are you gonna breathe it in? That's not like no, no. That's that. What that wasn't. That shouldn't even be a concern. So I'm going with Bob on this one. I'm, I'm saying he's truthful. Sounds too much like the surreal world of Bob Mortimer to be actually the truth. I think it's a lie. <laughs> it's a I lie. Think it's true. You think it's a lie? Yeah. No. Nobody in the world owns a flute, really, do they? <laughs> <laughs> we think it's a lie. You think it's yeah. a lie, yeah. Bob? Please truth be true. Or lie? It was. A lie. Damn it! <laughs> I can break an. 
An apple. All right, I've seen that one. So we're gonna end it here. Yay, I finished the video. All right, if uh, anybody hasn't seen this apple bit, it's a different video from before. I already did this, just like a little segment of just the apple story. So ta-da, I did it. This is amazing. And I believe somewhere of more like compilation of just Bob, this, this says part one. There is a part two, but I think it's called something different. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for it and I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna keep going. And I'm gonna watch everything Bob. I love this guy. This guy is amazing, hilarious. I guessed several, right? I only got, ah, dude, I can't even remember. I only got a few wrong. I, I, I'm understanding this man. I'm, I'm getting on his wavelength. I don't know if that's the right word, but you know what I mean. I'm, we're, we're, we're understanding each other. We're getting there. Anyway, this is amazing. Thank you guys for suggesting this. I absolutely love it. I'm having the best time being able to react to this stuff for you guys. Um, it's not just for you guys it's like it's for me this is amazing i've never i would have never learned about these kind of shows and these people and and just everything that just it brings me so much joy i love it i absolutely love it um obviously it's not something that's like available to me on tv or anything <laughs> the only thing available to me on tv is argentinian tv and argentinian humor is just absolutely awful i'm sorry if any argentinian is watching but it's atrocious i do not resonate with argentinian humor at all so i'm, I'm loving the british humor so anyway, there you go. I completed this in three parts, so that's nice. I'll find the other part of this to keep going, watch it all, watch more Wilty, watch more just everybody. I want to see more Lee Matt. I want to see it all, man. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'll keep going. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm glad if you enjoyed it. Whatever you guys are off to do now, have a great one. Have a great week. Have, I don't know, just live life enjoy it, love it, all that. Anyway, guys, thank you all so much, and I'll be around.